So for the most part, we want our atoms to obey the octet rule. However, there are some exceptions that we need to be aware of. The first one is known as an expanded octet. It's exactly as it sounds. The expanded octet will occur when the central atom holds more than eight electrons. Now, the central atom has to be big enough to do that. So we're only going to see this with atoms in row three or lower of the periodic table. And it can expand to 10, 12, 14. There really isn't any guidelines about the extent of that expansion. So it's row three or lower in the periodic table. Some examples of central atoms that will do an expanded octet include sulfur, iodine, chlorine. So iodine and chlorine are both group seven atoms. Normally they don't do an expanded octet, but when they're serving as the central atom, and that's key here, then you'll see them doing an expanded octet. Um, xenon, again, another weird example. Xenon is a group eight. It has a full balance. So we don't typically think of group eight atoms being involved in bonding at all. But xenon does um, when it's a central atom and it does an expanded octet. This isn't going to be a, a comprehensive list. There's a lot more examples because really, if you're in row three or lower, it's a possibility. However, be really careful. Looking at row two of the periodic table or period two, um, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, these guys never do an expanded octet. So, no expanded octets in those row two atoms. All right, the second one then is the opposite of an expanded octet. It's called an incomplete octet. Make some room here so I can write that down. So example number two is an incomplete octet. I think this one's a little bit easier to recognize than the expanded octet because there's you're already aware of one of them, right? Hydrogen does an incomplete octet. Hydrogen likes to have two electrons. And then apart from hydrogen, we have beryllium, which is satisfied with two electrons. I'm sorry, four electrons or two bonds. And we have boron that's satisfied with six electrons. How can you remember that? Well, if you're looking at your periodic table, you have hydrogen, helium. Those both are happy with two. Lithium, lithium doesn't do covalent bonds. Beryllium's really small, right? It's right in the beginning too. So that's why it's satisfied with four. Boron satisfied with six, at which point then you're returning to carbon. And carbon always does an octet. So carbon always is going to do eight. So just those two you have, need to remember for the incomplete. And the last one is a free radical. How you're going to recognize this exception is through your electron mass. When you do your electron mass, if you have an odd number of electrons, you're going to have a free radical situation. It's not very stable. These are very reactive. When you see smog and air pollution, that's associated with free radical chemistry. Um, a lot of people will talk about how free radicals cause aging and cancer in the body. Um, UV light has um, a lot of the potential to make uh, free radicals. So very reactive species, very interesting. Um, you want to get all your atoms when you draw your structure. You want them to almost obey the octet rule. Somebody's going to have to have seven or nine electrons because you have an odd number but get them as close to eight as possible. Um, and the last thing is just double check that you didn't miss a negative sign or a positive sign. Sometimes 
Um, people will do the math, but they'll leave off a negative sign, which then turns it into a non-exception. Let's practice drawing some of these Lewis dot structures that have exceptions. So nitrogen donates five electrons, and oxygen will donate six electrons for a total of 11 electrons. When you get an odd number of electrons, I would encourage you to go back and make sure you didn't miss a negative sign or a positive sign. In this case, we didn't. There's no charge there. It's a neutral species. So since we have 11 electrons, an odd number of electrons, we know we're looking at a free radical. I'm going to connect it and do the approach the same way I normally do. Right now, nitrogen has two. I'm going to put six more electrons to try to get it up to eight. So two, four, six, eight. Oxygen has two, and I'm going to give it six electrons. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Wow, I used way too many electrons there. I only have 11, and I used 14. So the same rule is going to apply. Um, if we've used too many, we need to start looking at a double bond or a triple bond. So let's do a double bond. So right now with the double bond, oxygen has four, two, four. So I'll give it two more electrons, two, four, six, eight. I only have 11 altogether. So I'll do the remaining three on the nitrogen. That means nitrogen has two, four, six, seven. So nitrogen has seven and oxygen has eight and we used exactly 11. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So that's the correct structure. A lot of times students will ask me, well, why does nitrogen have seven and oxygen, oxygen gets all eight? Well, we could have a situation where nitrogen has eight and oxygen has seven. However, since we know that oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, oxygen has um, the greater ability to pull in those electrons, this is going to be the more likely form. Most of the time, oxygen will have eight and nitrogen will have seven because of the electronegativity value, the electronegativity associated with oxygen. But this does happen. All right, next example here, boron. Boron should be one of the ones that you've memorized that does an incomplete octet. An incomplete octet is when the central atom is satisfied with less than eight electrons. Boron satisfied with six. It helps to memorize that piece of information. So I'm going to do boron in the middle with my three fluorines attached. And I should have done my electron math first, but it's never too late, right? So do boron gives us three electrons, so we'll do group three. And I have three fluorines. They're in group seven. And so 24 electrons all together. Let's work on satisfying the octet of the fluorine. So each fluorine is going to need six more electrons because it has one bond. So two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So it's tempting. Boron only has six electrons around it. But this is the correct structure because we've used 24 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So it is correct. Sometimes students will ask me, well, I can draw it like this and use exactly 24 electrons as well and everyone's octet will be satisfied. But remember, this is going to be incorrect because we don't see double bonds with fluorine. So this is why the exception holds true, because fluorine doesn't double bond, and boron's okay with just six electrons. Right, moving on. At first, 
it may be difficult to tell what kind of exception this is. Let's start um, with the electron mass. So we have xenon, which is in group 8, and fluorine, which is in group 7. So I'm going to do um, 7 times 6. So we have 50 electrons all together. The electron math is critical um, even when we get to these larger numbers, and we'll see um, why. So I'm going to put xenon in the middle. And again, going back to this idea, fluorine only does one bond. It won't even do a situation where it has bonds on both sides. So I have six fluorines. And I don't want to put fluorine in the middle. I don't want to do anything like that because that would violate what we know to be true about fluorine. So instead of trying to be creative there and connect a fluorine to a fluorine, I'm going to actually just connect all six fluorines. One, two, three, four, five, six. All six fluorines directly to that xenon, which is serving as my central atom. Right away, we see that we have an expanded octet if we do it like that. And that's fine. Xenon's low enough in the periodic table that it can accommodate more than eight electrons in the central atom. I need to complete the octet on my fluorine. So I'll give each fluorine six more electrons. And then I need to start counting. How many electrons did I use? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. So double check that, but we only used 48 electrons. This isn't a situation like we saw over here where we need more electrons. We don't need more electrons. We have 50 electrons and we only used 48. So we have two more electrons that we need to use. Well, Xenon already grew to accommodate those extra bonds to fluorine. So I'm going to just throw those random two extra electrons on the central atom as well. So just expand it a little bit more. And now when you do your counts, you can see that you use exactly 50 electrons. Alright, so NO2, nitrogen has five electrons, five valence electrons. So we have two oxygens, they each have six valence electrons for a total of 12. So when I add that all up, I get 17 electrons. Odd number, but I didn't miss a charge or anything. So I know that I'm dealing with a free radical species. Um, nitrogen is my best candidate for my central atom as it's the least electronegative when compared to oxygen. So I have two electrons currently on this oxygen. I'll put six more electrons. Nitrogen has two bonds, so four electrons. I need four more. Two, four, six, so I've satisfied all the octets. Let me see how many electrons that needs. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I used 20 electrons, but I only had 17, which tells me I probably have um, a double bond in there somewhere. So 2, 4, 6, Eight, and then two, four, six. Let me hold off on nitrogen because I know somebody's gonna have to be the odd man out. Probably won't be nitrogen. 
because oxygen is more electronegative. So right now, I've satisfied the octet on that oxygen by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and then I'll put that last remaining electron on the nitrogen. So nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 7. That's as good as it's going to get. That's the correct structure. Other possibilities, I have students ask me, well, what if I drew the double bond on the other side? And that's fine as well. We don't get into it too much in this class or at all. But this is known as a resonance structure. And then sometimes students will also draw a possibility where the oxygen has seven electrons. So two, four, six, eight, and I'll do eight on nitrogen, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, seven, and two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. So that's also a possibility, but I would say knowing what we know about oxygen and how electronegative it is, the top two, these are the most likely, and they're pretty much the same thing. We just move the position of the double bond. This one can happen, but it's not gonna be that common. All right, moving on, beryllium is in group two. And we have two fluorines, they're in group seven, so 14 electrons there for a total of 16 electrons. Beryllium is farther to the left of the periodic table. That makes it more electropositive. It's better at sharing. So I'm gonna put beryllium as my central atom. And I'm going to satisfy the octets on fluorine. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. This is the correct structure. It's important to remember that beryllium is satisfied with four electrons. So this is how we commonly see beryllium with just uh, two bonds. Last example here. It's going to be an expanded octet. And I know that because I have the arsenic, which will serve as my central atom, and five fluorines. So I'm going to have to connect those five fluorines to the central atom. And let me do some electron math. So arsenic's in group five. And then fluorine is in group seven. So we have 40 electrons all together to build our structure. So I'm gonna satisfy the octets on all of the fluorines. Each fluorine currently has one bond or two electrons. So I need to put six more electrons. Arsenic has two, four, six, eight, ten. Arsenic has ten electrons. It's fine. It's low enough in the periodic table that it can do the expanded octet. Let's check that we use four. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty. So that's a perfect structure, um, and we see the expanded octet come into play.